Hello, hello, and welcome to our wellness lecture about social connections. If this is your first wellness event, welcome. We're happy to ha have you. If this isn't your first virtual event, we're glad to have you back. My name is Min, and I am one of the Beach Balance Assistant here at the Student Rec. And today we have Sarah from Student Health Services presenting. Is there anything else I need to address, Sarah, before you get started? I'm all good. Awesome. Take it away. All right, take it away, Penny. Anyone understand that reference from SpongeBob? Yeah, when he's in his house isolating, I find that one to be very relatable at this time. Awesome, so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. Um, hopefully we can all kind of have some compassion at this very moment, given this is all technological and new for me as well. Awesome, so um, today our presentation is about connecting virtually with students and um, other people that you might be connected with um, in your day-to-day -day life, right? So things have obviously changed. We're all um, in a new realm of reality, which is through technology, other than those that we live with, obviously. Um, so with that being said, my name is Sarah, um, and this presentation is brought to you by Student Health Services. Cool, so I wanna start off with an icebreaker activity, so feel free to participate. Um, just go ahead and answer the questions one through five in the chat box and we'll all go ahead and discuss that together. I'm gonna give you guys a total of like a couple minutes and then we'll talk about it together as well. And don't worry, I also answered these questions but we'll get to them later. Awesome, so I see some people discussing like feeling connected to the outside world and myself. Yeah, being able to travel, keeping myself on schedule, both asynchronous and synchronous, me too. I do miss social interactions, this is true. I do miss museums a lot. Going on hikes. I'm sure there's a few trails that you can do social isolation hikes with, I think. Well, thank you guys so much for uh, participating in that. Um, we're going to move on. I think we're going to talk about a little bit more of those things as we go on through this presentation. So we're going to kind of talk about how to connect virtually and some fun things you can do um, through FaceTime or Zoom and other apps that I'll introduce that you guys can use to feel more connected, right? And yes, I miss hugging people, hugging people that I care for a lot. That's a big one. That's a big one for a lot of people. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and introduce myself. Um, my name is Sarah, like I've said, um, <laughs> and I'm a peer health educator with the Office of Wellness and Health Promotion. We, our office is within the Student Health Services on campus. Um, I'm a fourth year uh, health science major at Cal State Long Beach. I've been here all four years. And um, my answer to those questions was um, being in charge of my little brother's online schooling, as I'm sure a lot of you guys understand. If you do have younger siblings, it's a lot um, to deal with and understanding um, and having compassion for each other when you each need to have your own workspaces. Um, I've been doing a lot of Zoom movies with my friends. I recently rewatched the Twilight Saga and the Pirates of the Caribbean Saga, so that was real fun. Um, I also have almost all asynchronous classes, only one of them, which happens to be my 8 a.m. class is synchronous, but um, like somebody mentioned, it is nice to have some structure within the whole scramble of things um, and then I do miss going to the movies having some nice AC especially in this heat would have been nice um, also sitting down with some popcorn and re-watching or or newly watching some action movies and then the first thing I'm going to do is go to Six Flags um, I love roller coasters so I look forward to being able to do that eventually awesome so who else misses working in a virtual or I'm sorry working in a physical setting with other students I know that the library is closed and that's something at least I would do a lot with my friends and other classmates is go to the library together and work, right? So first of all, it's really normal to feel isolated in a time like this. A lot of you mentioned feeling isolated and um, disconnected from other students in, and with professors, right? So um, a suggestion would be to try to create a virtual workspace with friends or classmates, right? So that means you can sit up a, set up a Zoom meeting, right, with a bunch of people, and you can all just kind of work on your own individual um, tasks and elements that go into your schooling. Um, so each person can work on their own tasks while hanging out online. So if someone thinks of a funny, um, sorry, you just saw my email. 
<laughs> um, so if, you know, if somebody's sitting there and they want to crack a joke, it's possible to do so while being on Zoom together or there's even group FaceTime these days. Um, some good options for that is Zoom US and FaceTime. These are great platforms for virtual workspaces. Now, um, there's always ways to virtually chat. So maybe you don't have time to all sit down at the same time together on the computer or your phones, but you still wanna share your day-to-day -day activities. You still want to include people in your, um, in your life without feeling so strict and um, abiding to different times and, and settings. So there's apps such as uh, Marco Polo, WhatsApp and Snapchat that you can send videos, like for example, if something crazy happened, you can sit down and film like a five minute video of you telling a story. And then when your friend or family member has time to, they can sit down and they can actually watch that video um, on their own time and get back to you when they can. Um, I know a lot of people have been playing Animal Crossing. That's available on the Switch. Um, that my friend recently convinced me to purchase Animal Crossing. Um, I have yet to do it just because I, I'm afraid I'll be quickly um, attached to it. But I hear it's a really fun way to connect with friends, even if you're not having a legitimate conversation. It's just kind of nice to interact through a virtual space. Um, so that can be really fun as well. Now, maybe you want to try the old school route. So this is actually really fun, especially if you have family abroad or if you have family in other states, maybe you or friends even, right? Maybe you wanna write a letter, um, make a postcard, something along those lines. Um, it can be really fun and creative. This is when you can take time to really, um, you know, get into your creative elements and artistry if you're an artist, or even if you're not an artist, it can be fun to experiment with different colors and, and things like that. Um, so you can write letters through the mail, and if you can't physically write letters, there are virtual postcards that you can send through the um, app store, right? Or you can even send them along text messages um, with like writing or le like letter formats and things like that. So that can always be a fun way to communicate with others while taking the opportunity to be physically distanced. Um, there's also something called a virtual movie theater. So as I mentioned, I rewatched the Twilight Saga, which is much more dramatic um, to watch at my age, at least, just because I kind of get it more. Um, and then also, you know, taking Zoom or FaceTime devices and watching a movie together at the same time. So the way that I would explain you do this is if you have a computer, um, you can watch a film on it and have your headphones connected to the computer. And that way you can have your phone on FaceTime with somebody. So you're both listening to the movie through your separate devices and then you press play and pause at the same time so that when something happens or a reaction happens, you're able to talk about it and pause the movie as if you were watching it together, right? So it's a great way to rewatch sagas together. It's a great way to watch new movies that are coming out. Um, I know that Disney Plus is just now releasing Mulan. So anybody who wants to sit down and watch that with a friend, just because you can't be together doesn't mean you can't be mentally there together, right? So um, I would highly recommend that. And if you don't have access to like a Netflix or a Hulu account, it's possible to share that login information with a friend or borrow that login information and you guys can watch something together as well. So you don't necessarily have to have your own access to those kinds of um, programming and subscriptions. Awesome, so you can also have something called a meditation meeting, right? So in this time, it's really important to kind of hone in on who you are and things that you need personally, right? So because things are changing so much, your mental health, whether you've noticed or not, um, might have taken a toll for the worst, you know, maybe you need to take time to focus on yourself and check in with yourself. Um, so maybe you want to have a Zoom meeting or FaceTime meeting and play some relaxing music. So meditation meetings can be really effective because you can stretch together and try new yoga poses together, laugh with each other. Um, and this can also be a great time to talk about something that you might need to talk to somebody about. Maybe this is a good opportunity to vent or um, give advice or get advice from other people. So meditation meetings is really a great way to kind of relax, focus on yourself while also connecting to somebody that you care for. Next, I will say we can share playlists. Um, this is something that I think they did back in the day, right? When you would share a mixtape with somebody, you'd get it on cassette or you'd get it on CD and you'd share it with somebody. This is really a great way of communicating and sharing your feelings amongst other people. If you wanna do that, you can go on YouTube and if you search up a song, a lyrical video, whatever you want to do, um, and then you select underneath that video, you can do add to um, a creating playlist, right? So if you have an ongoing playlist that you've been listening to really often, or 
if you're sad and you know that your friend is also sad and you want to share a sad playlist or an upbeat playlist to make them feel better, this is a great and free way to share your feelings. Um, music can be really impactful for people, especially in a time like this, where if you're feeling like a certain genre is calling to you and you know you know, you think of that song and you know your friend would enjoy it, send them a link to your, your mixtape, you know, make them something that can be very special um, and memorable for some people. So this doesn't even just have to take place during quarantine. Um, this can be something you do together um, or amongst groups of friends where you pass playlists around. So if you're interested in a new band that you just heard of, create a playlist around that band's new music and include other things that you might be inspired by. Um, this can be a great way to reconnect with people, um, no matter where you are in the world, no matter what time it is. So you can also share Pinterest pages. So I've been on Pinterest a little bit more than I like to admit recently. Um, this is a great way to um, find new recipes, new fashion inspiration. Um, if you're interested in photography, there's a lot of cool photography pages you can look at. Um, this is a great way to kind of compile a list of things or a like a compilation of images that you find to be very satisfactory or inspiring. Um, and if you think of somebody, you can share that Pinterest page with them, right? So that might include new recipes, right? So I know a lot of people are trying out baking and cooking new recipes, and this might be a great way to find new recipes and new baking ingredients. So this might include mood boards, fashion, or new recipes, right? So um, a mood board for me where like, if I'm really liking a green filter on images, I can collect a lot of pictures with green elements in it that might make me feel really happy or joyful. And I think, oh my God, this is my friend's favorite color. Let me share that Pinterest page with her. And it's just kind of a little, a little upbeat, um, you know, an upbeat reminder that you're thinking of somebody. So this might be a really great way to, to feel more inspired and kind of get outside of your head and get outside of your home when it comes to, you know, being in quarantine and being isolated. I know we can't travel and go to the mountains for a weekend, but you can send somebody a Pinterest page of a bunch of nature and that might make them feel a little bit more um, free than they might feel in this very moment. Awesome, so this brings me to baking and cooking virtually. Um, so this might include like, I don't know, um, baking new cookies. So you can always like decorate cookies and make new, new things and fun things together. Um, so let's just say you went on Pinterest and found a cool recipe. Now you both agree that you want to make some cookies together. Okay, well, you can go ahead and FaceTime and go on Zoom or something like that and bake them at the same time. That might mean collecting ingredients um, and then baking it at the exact same time, taking it out of the oven at the same time and trying it together at once. Um, this also might mean like picking up a recipe um, from you know, your grandma's old cooking book. Maybe you wanna share that with a friend and say, hey, this really worked out for me, you should try it. Um, you can also chat virtually while you're doing this. It's almost like you're hanging out in the same space, but you're not necessarily in the same room together. Um, and uh, yeah, it can be a really fun way to do that. Also, like for example, what I like to do is I like to try um, one new recipe from around the world once a week. So this week is Indian food. So my mom is attempting to make some chicken tikka masala. Um, I happen to have a friend who's from India. So I told her, I said, let's, let's do this virtually and let's see how we make these recipes differently and see how these, these work out, you know? So kind of have like a taste test or if you do bake, um, cookies or cupcakes, you can always have like a little competition amongst friends um, where you say which ones look best, which ones are decorated the best. Um, I know a TV show that's really fun is The Great British Baking Show on Netflix. Um, I'm sure a lot of us have heard of it. It's a really fun show that teaches you all types of recipes and it's very wholesome and British, so there's no mega competition. Um, but it's a fun way to learn different skills and tricks. So if you do like watch something virtually together, maybe it can be one of those episodes and then you take inspiration from that and bake cookies together. Um, so now we have something seasonal, um, virtual pumpkin carving. Um, so this is actually something that I 100% plan on doing. Um, you can have a little competition where you all, you know, either you can pick out a design for each other and challenge somebody to, I see, I see you, I see you with the celebration sign. Um, this can be a really, really fun way to connect with people seasonally, right? I know we're all missing out on the Halloween festivities. Um, I personally am going to miss the pumpkin patch. I'm not sure if it's going to be open this year, but um, I really, really want to carve pumpkins. Um, so maybe you can grab a group of people virtually, right? 
I have a zoom and then trade around um, the design ideas. So for example, you can challenge each other where somebody has to carve a cat or the other person has to carve a bat into it or something like that, where it can be really challenging and fun, or you can all just choose your own designs and paint them. A lot of people paint their pumpkins to be blue or red or something along those lines. So that can be really just be up to you and personalize your skills, right? Um, yeah, so what I also like to do when I carve pumpkins is take out the seeds and bake them. So as long as you're not allergic to pumpkin seeds, you can always take the seeds, toss them and dry them. And then you can put them on a baking sheet in the oven with some cinnamon and sugar or just salt. And you stick them in the oven and bake them for about 10 to 15 minutes. And it'll dry the moisture out and they taste super great. So that can be something you do together. Um, you can also make pumpkin pie. I personally have no skill with pie baking. Um, but if you do choose to do something like that, you can always take the um, inside of the pumpkin and make a pumpkin pie out of that. Yes, speaking of self-care and self-compassion, um, sharing self-care tips. So our routines have obviously changed a lot. We're not doing the same things that we once were. We're not, you know, the same people that we once were maybe, right? So how are you coping with being in quarantine and self-isolating? Maybe you need to check in with yourself and take a second to really take a deep breath and ask, what could I really use right now? And you know, if that is socializing, sure, you can't go out to dinner with your friends right now, but maybe you can pick up the phone and call them and talk for a couple minutes and that might really help soothe you, you know? Or maybe you just need to take a warm bath or throw your feet up and watch a movie with some popcorn. If that's what you need to do, then do that, right? And sometimes it can be really helpful to share tips with each other. You know, if you, if you just order this really cool candle off Amazon and it smells amazing, share that with somebody, you know? Or if it's somebody's birthday, you can always gift them something through an online order, right? So these are all really great ways to kind of check in with yourself and make sure that you are taking care of your own mental and physical health. I personally have decided to start exercising a lot more, right? So I recently bought a jump rope that counts how many, how many rounds you go and it can count down your minutes and everything like that. And that's something that I thought worked so well for me. I shared it with a friend and she ended up getting the exact same set as me. And we even, you know, weekly on a weekly basis, we talk about how that, how that week went. Um, so in moments like those, I think sharing, sharing that, that inspiration and those small things, everyday, day-to-day -day things can really help somebody get into a routine that suits them best. So maybe you have a new face mask recipe. I know there's a lot of people experimenting um, with that, for example, like Pinterest, like I've already mentioned, they have a lot of cool recipes on there. Maybe sharing that with somebody or, you know, finding a new essential oil smell with a, you know, or a hand lotion, something that's just really helped relax you. You can do that and share that with others as well. Um, and I will always reiterate, have more self-compassion, give yourself a break. Um, people make mistakes. I've made two mistakes already in two of my online classes and I could beat myself up over it all the time, but I realized this is new to me um, and this is new to everybody. And it's just important to step back, take a break. You know, if I need to get up and walk around, if I need to scream in my pillow, I will do it. Um, whatever helps me get through the stress of what's taking over my mind at this very moment. Um, also to have really self, um, positive self-talk. You know, the way that we talk to each other and the way that we address ourselves is also really important. If you tell yourself, you know, oh, I'm stupid or I'm not, I'm not going to be able to do this on time, maybe you should try rewording yourself and saying, I can do this, I will do this, I'll get this done when I can, because this is my priority. And sometimes just telling yourself those things is going to help you get over that hill of self-doubt. And that's, that's probably more useful now than it might have been before, because you don't really have those people around you all the time um, to support you and push you to be motivated. I know that going to the library was like huge for me. I knew that if I was surrounded by people who are also studying, um, specific people, right? Because some people I socialize too much with, um, but some people, you know, if I'm around people who are studying and working hard, I'm able to function and study and work really hard as well. That's not possible right now. I'm living at home with two dogs, both my parents, both my brothers. It's a lot of drama <laughs> and a lot of screaming and yelling and barking and squeaky toys here and there. So. I have to sit down, remind myself that this is my priority, like this presentation today. So I believe that's my last tip 
but I do want to take time for questions. I am here for that. Um, is there anybody who wants to maybe like make a comment or question or suggestion based on what I've talked about today? I'll share something that we've done as full-time staff here at the REC. Um, we were speaking about the baking with each other. Um, as full-time staff, we actually had a day where we voted on someone's recipe and the winner taught us all how to make that recipe during one of our full-time staff meetings. And we ended up making banana pudding and it was super delicious and fun just to have a meeting where it wasn't so serious. So, so if, if anyone wants to do that, take that idea, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> I definitely want to watch Shrek now. I think there's three of them. I want to watch the Shrek series now. I absolutely have to. That's a brilliant, brilliant idea. Um, very meme worthy. So um, that could be fun. Also, you could also have like a meme competition, couldn't you? You know, that's a great way to kind of laugh things off. I think I'm going to have a meme competition with my friends on Zoom where we all post, we have a meme of the week and then we all vote on it and see who wins. Exactly, is Jackbox. Jackbox sounds like a lot of fun. Well, I thank you for that. Um, so Honestly, when I made this presentation, I really just thought of things that I, I missed the most and then thought of what I can do virtually instead. Also, yes, you can do collaborations on playlists on Spotify as well. So the only issue I would say is that Spotify users, and you both have to be Spotify users to share them, or else if you share that playlist with somebody, um, I believe it's either scrambled or they have to um, they have to look up the songs individually, but I cannot confirm that or deny that. Um, but I will say that it is, YouTube is one of the only free options out there, but if you're both uh, Spotify users, you can 100% do that. So if you have any more questions, you, or feel free to email us or call us. We also have a full functioning pharmacy. This is a great opportunity for you to get um, a lot of basic needs taken care of at minimal cost. Um, if you have allergies, you know, don't go pay $25 for Claritin when you can get, you know, you know, an antihistamine at our pharmacy for like a quarter of the price. So I highly recommend using our pharmacy. Um, everything is at cost. Um, with that being said, Let's also talk about our behavioral health department. Um, so you can go ahead and make an appointment with our case manager if you need to see a therapist or a psychiatrist or a psychologist. Um, so you can go ahead and call the phone number. We also have a case manager for health concerns. So if you come in and you need to actually see a licensed dermatologist, our case manager in the office can also connect you to resources based on your existing insurance as well. So that kind of brings down the stress of having to, you know, make your own phone calls when in reality we have a case manager to hear um, to work with you. So please do, if you need to talk to a professional, if you need any additional support, um, do call the behavioral health department and talk to somebody who um, is more than happy to help out. And then follow us on our social media. Um, we have Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook. This is at CSULBSHS. We also have a link tree on our Instagram to a lot of our resources. So that might also be helpful if you can't always remember the website. Um, it's always on hand in our bio. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and give some closing comments real quick. Um, I really do wanna thank you for attending. I really appreciate some students uh, coming in and interacting with us. Um, as a peer health educator, this is the reason I like to do my job is to actually get to sit here and talk to y'all. Um, and interact with you guys. And it's really a positive feeling to know that we're all feeling the same things. And I'm really excited and happy to know that I got to share some of those tips with you guys and um, do carve those pumpkins and take care of yourselves. And 
don't let this whole new situation stop you from being, you know, academically successful. Um, we're more than just a university, we are also your support system. So do use your resources here on campus, call our office if you need anything. And um, I wish you guys the best of luck. Thank you guys for coming. I hope you learned a lot from this presentation.